Good evening. Let's see if this is going to work. Can someone give me a yell if there is some audio and or video? I prefer the and rather than the all. I'm starting to see hellos. Dun, 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 dun. Come on, chat. Do not let me down. Audio. Good. <laughs> yeah. Things. Yell. Excellent. Perfect. Hello. Welcome back. It's been a while since we've done one of these streams. Um, top tip. Don't leave it six months. Otherwise, suddenly streaming is oh, terrifying. Oh, and I'm meant to be probably swearing less or at least <laughs> later than that. Okay. So we are going to be doing a bit of an update today. It's a um, kind of grand bag of stuff. Uh, we are, I've got a list of things over here to try and keep me vaguely on topic, but I may ramble. Um, just a reminder that there is something that you have to type before questions for them to end up in our kind of, for our bot to pick them up. I think it was Q exclamation mark. Um, someone will tell me with skills uh, what that was. But yes, uh, as soon as I see it, <laughs> I will let you know, uh, because otherwise I will see your questions because they will be lost to the sands of time. Um, and the infinite scroll of the merciless chatbot. Right, so we are going to be talking about a bunch of stuff today. We're going to be talking about roughly where we are. Uh, we're going to be talking about kind of good stuff and also what things we're kind of a little nervous about, uh, what things we're looking to build over the coming time and some of the feature request stuff. Um, it's, okay, it's uh, exclamation mark Q. Get it around the right way. Uh, but if you do that and then a question, it will get hoovered off into our big collection of questions that I will address in the Q&A portion of this, which will be a bit later. So I better start rambling uh, on topic. And um, yeah, okay, so a um, couple of house rules. We've done the question one. The other one is that um, we like doing this stuff open. We like being honest about what we're up to. Uh, it's an experiment, but it seems to be going all right. Uh, the one part of being honest is being honest about what we're not going to be honest about, and namely what you're not going to be told about ever. And um, that kind of boils down to any time we would have to put our practices onto someone else. So if a company comes talk to us, it's not right for us to dictate whether they're exposed or not about things they're thinking about. So if we were to have some conversation with a company, we wouldn't tell you. Um, but that's the general gist of it. It's uh, nothing to, nothing rocket science. Just kind of obvious stuff. We don't want to burn any bridges. Cool. So how's it going? It is going pretty good. Uh, it is it is very bizarre to wake up every day and be able to work on a game. Uh, it's the kind of thing Johnny and I talked about when I was like, like he's like, you, Johnny is like a year older than me. So when I was like 15, he was 16 and we were making games and like, Dark basic and stuff like that. Um, yeah, so it's it's incredible. It's very surreal. It's uh, but it's awesome to be doing this, and we're really enjoying what we're building. So that is cool, and the community is amazing. Um, what have we done over the last three months? Um, we well, we're approaching three months now, and we've got about twenty patches out for the game, or it will be about twenty by then. Uh, around two hundred devlogs are up, and a bunch of Kickstarter updates. And I am getting back into the habit of doing the weekly summaries again because I kind of got a bit lax on that for a while. Release was an interesting time. Um, yeah, and we got a beta out, which was fun and very buggy. And that kind of and we did some firefighting for a while. And uh, yeah, that seems to be it's it's at least more under control now. It's allowed us to be able to go back and start doing some feature work that took a little longer than expected, but it's all right. We've dropped a whole bunch of features amongst those updates. So like board colors and creature scaling and atmosphere controls and other things I will look to the right to remember. Um, yeah, lots of lots of tweaks, lots of assets, lots of just bits and bobs and a whole bunch of bug fixes, of course. And the upcoming stuff, obviously, um, I mean, we've been talking about that pretty openly. Uh, the emotes system is well underway and um, I need to do a whole bunch of the back end stuff for that so it can be persisted and synced between machines and all that kind of stuff. And um, rulers are going well right now. They are being, uh, the visuals for that are being prototyped by Johnny, so that's going well. Um, good job on everyone doing the question thing. That's working well by the looks of it. Um, yeah, I've done some back-end stuff for bookmarks and just put in the back-end stuff for flying, which is basically just a thing that said yes or no, but it still needs to be done. It still needs to sync up and down and between machines, so that was some work. Uh, Copy-paste creatures and a variety of other things are in progress, um, but they tend to... I mean, one of the beautiful things about working in a small company is you can go on what thing you need to do, like, for your own mental sanity. Like, if, if a task is just 
not right for that day, you can switch task and do something else. And because we haven't promised, and we've been careful about this this time, not promised very hard deadlines on specific things, it allows us that latitude. And it just allows for healthier developers, to be honest. Um, so that's cool. Also underway at the moment, lots of research and experiments, especially around terrain system, prop system, and um, performance things, which we'll be talking about all of those soonish um lots of questions going by oh it's going to be a busy end of the stream just make sure i've got all my elixirs of life on hand i've got coffee so i can be even shakier than i am already let's put that down carefully and water's over there good right and um oh yeah probably a very important thing we're still here we're very healthy and uh, all is going well the spite kind of scares we've actually got through the corona stuff very well so far so and i hope i hope you're doing the same as well and i hope your families are all right best of love to all of you uh, yeah, keep doing the good things. Um, right, so we'll go from that kind of news on to art news, uh, which has been going really well. We just wanted to send a big shout out to all the people who have been uh, putting things on the asset suggestion site. That is really helpful. Uh, it's not something we've tackled in a kind of like, we will go down the shopping list and make exactly these things in order. But what we've generally done is when we're making one of these packs, we look there for kind of trends and we try and address at least something in some way in each of the things we've been doing so far. And I mean, obviously early days, so we're trying to like, to, we're going kind of disparate places, right? It's like, so we've got ruins in one thing and then it's like dock sides and things like this. And we just have to, we just have to fill in the gaps and then we'll have all these random points and we'll connect them all together in time. That's, that's the long haul. We just need to do that. Um, that has been going really well. Um, the, one area that we are that like i mean there's been rightly been comments about it and it's also very obvious just for those from those who've been playing the beta we lack currently uh, in the hero department we don't have that much variety especially when it comes to kind of um what the main things are kind of like ah sorry my brain just froze on me good to be in practice doing this stuff uh, but yeah racial variety and also presented genders we just don't have a large selection of those right now and we need to and the reason we've been uh, focusing on mainly on creatures and tile sets recently is we are currently setting something up in the background, which we're not talking about yet, um, to be able to do a really big push on heroes. And uh, that's actually super exciting. So we're really looking forward to telling you and showing you what we've got up sleeves for that. But it is coming, so do not uh, think we've forgotten you. Uh, definitely for early access, we want to have a good range of stuff because, you know, people want to play as their kind of chosen character. It really... Obviously, it's the first step to being able to be in character is to see it in the game. Um, so other than that, I think we'll jump into a little unrelated stuff. Oh, yeah. Uh, terms of service, EULA stuff, legal side, it is it is still coming. Um, legal things are hard and getting them right is hard because otherwise you spend money. You can, you can pay someone to give you the wrong thing as well. So... We thought we had something solid um, and then we sent it off to our kind of good lawyer that we have in the US who specializes in um, those kind of user agreements. And we, it, he also specializes in single state changes. So there are, there are different rules in different places and he knows the European side and things like this. So um, good chap. He's gone through it. He added a load of things. Uh, we went through and normally when companies want contracts, they want very broad rights over things. Uh, so there's a few places we went through and went, okay, why does it have to be worded like this? Or, and some of the answers is because that's just how you get the legal protections. And some of it is like, oh no, we can we can work around and kind of minimize some of that to make sure we're not overreaching too much. But it's, in a, it's gonna be in your hands. And obviously with all these things, we can retain the right to change it over time. So this is a thing that can evolve. And we'll just see, we'll just see how we do. Um, that's all really exciting. Partway through that, this is when it started getting delayed. We remembered about the GDPR stuff. Um, and when we looked into it, Norway, Norway really takes the GDPR very seriously. And so we had to do a whole bunch of stuff that we didn't have to do, um, as much didn't, we don't have to do as much for the U S but we do have to do a lot here. So we're in the process of doing that. We've got, our, um, some things going through reviews back and forth right now. It is, it is definitely not, <laughs> it's definitely not the bit of game development you dream about when you dream about doing game development, but it's, uh, it's going cool. Um, so that is going on. Oh yes, I had a note here just to say that most of this terms of service stuff isn't particularly, isn't going to matter that much to uh, where we are right now. Most of these things are protections against ourselves. Uh, it's, it's really like 
like every clause in the terms of service comes from the ruins of some company and we just don't want to end up ruined um but it, yeah we don't have to worry too much right now which is good uh we'll see so i guess it's one of the pains of success when these things really start mattering um all right let's talk about a few of the things that were in the uh feature requests that may have gone under the radar because obviously lots of people there were lots of uh excellent requests in there and one of the beautiful things which again personally both johnny and i were very happy about uh was the vast majority of things were totally in line with where we want to see the game get to right it was just like there are things of like even when the the request was about a thing that like oh we don't want to fix it in that way but we understood the problem and like I, we can see oh yeah that definitely needs work right so a, a lot of those came up around uh control of like the slicing and things like this of the tiles so you can look inside buildings there are a lot of things there that aren't how we want it to be either and so we're just going to keep on cracking on that but it was really exciting it's lovely to see that obviously we're something is among this community is um is kind of an understood idea and uh yeah it's really exciting so um i'll talk about a few of those i'll talk about a few of the things that we've said no to and then we'll go on and just talk about more stuff let's have a look what we've got after that oh yeah then we'll talk about some of the technical future stuff that's kind of on our mind um but yes let's talk about a few of the things that we slipped in there that maybe you didn't see um but are important features or are going to be important features for the game so the first one is triggers triggers are going to be a defined region of space uh which you can attach a particular behavior to it's going to ship with three predefined behaviors and uh, the first one is disabled so that's fine so it does nothing when a creature moves into it um the next one is alert so um what's going to happen is if, if one of your players picks up the creature and moves it into a trigger which is going to be invisible you will get an alert as the gm saying ah someone's inside the trigger and that trigger will also probably become visible to you in the normal view rather than just in the gm view so you can see what's going on the last one is freeze and what that's going to do is when the creature moves in it gets caught like a spider web it's caught and they can't move it and what will happen it will send a gm request to you to allow them to move to take control again and that's going to just allow for certain traps and setups and things like this it's flexible enough it's not just about killing people um but it might just be oh you don't want them going down this tunnel yet because that's when you're going to spring a surprise um it, it's really a tool that we're going to put in and we're going to see how you use it um in time that will hook up to the scripting system too but um yeah you know everything one at a time uh building mode stuff right so building mode is going to be getting some refinements um to i don't really know how to explain this we talk about internally about making it more of its own thing and we don't it's not a thing of increasing like friction between play and building but it's just like i don't know like for example one of the things we did we moved creatures out from building so when you spawn a creature it doesn't go into building mode and so there's some some separations that you like that make sense in play and certain kind of tooling or behavioral changes or maybe um key binding stuff that makes sense in certain modes um yeah we just need to go and look at that as a unit again and see how we can make it nicer um so things are coming there one of the things we are going to be experimenting with and um took us a long time to get here is uh dragging out um rooms and we're going to do it in a very very simple way so let's start with why we haven't done this before now so we are very against um doing smart tiles we really want um to try and not bake logic into tiles because there's a lot of suggestions about like oh a tile could behave this way if it's next to another tile like this it could change the kind of floor and do all these things that's a, from the programming side i just shudder from like okay you've just spawned like if you drag out 100 by 100 that's 10,000 tiles 10,000 tiles that need to look next to each other and find out like like what's happened am i like what kind of state i'm in um do i need to change my behavior and all this kind of stuff there's a lot of work that would have to be done there and it makes making the assets makes modding harder and we want a general we want it to be flexible enough um we don't need it to be infinitely flexible because we'll talk about this more later i expect but um there's a certain level that you can hit where the average quality across the entire uh, community can be maximized which increases the amount of usable or like desirable assets that are available it, it's really it's kind of interesting stuff um we come from uh, some of our guys come from the neverwinter nights modding uh community and they can tell you stories of 
where just having more control in a particular game hasn't resulted in a better ecosystem or a longer lasting game or things like this so it's a balance that we want to strike so we've been very kind of reticent to do that um so we've held off and we've looked and we've waited and we've watched you build and yeah we know we need to do something to make that faster because at the moment there's there's a story with tales by that goes you can build in response to a story we want building and play to be one but if building is suddenly this dead period for five minutes just to be able to get a room up that's no good right that that doesn't deliver on that dream and so we know we've got to do something so this is an experiment but what we'll do as a very basic thing is make an association between a wall piece um and uh, sorry between a corner piece and its wall piece and like if it has a floor floor piece as well it's something that would be set up in tail weaver where you build a tile where you set it up like the modding tool basically and then when you drag out rather than dragging out n of something just a big grid of the same thing we will um, take the corner piece we will rotate it 90 degrees for each corner and then we will fill in uh, the gap with the specific tile that you specified in tailweaver so this will be a very basic thing and we're going to see how it behaves um, one of the other ideas that we really liked and have liked for quite a while um, is the idea of having kind of a blueprint system that was suggested and pointing out from um, uh yeah from from other games as well it's something yeah we've been thinking about but and and the beautiful part of it is it puts all the logic and tooling right you don't have um relationships baked into the tiles and so there's not that kind of fragility to it there um but again it's a big tool it's a thing that would have to be prototyped and uh built and iterated upon because i mean that's the thing like uh, uh, sometimes uh people hear prototypes like oh the, like you build that version and then you go oh yeah this is great and then we just then we then we clean it up and ship it but a prototype is more than likely going to be a failure and you're going to do that a few times and um yeah we're just not sure amongst everything else there will be time for that like we're gonna there's no guarantee that would be a good solution so we're gonna have to look into we're gonna have to look into things uh but yeah it is a it's a, it's a dope idea um it, it definitely would address some things that just dragging out a tile corners kind of thing wouldn't address so that's um so yeah that's we're doing experiments there you might have seen that in a feature request so i thought it was worth mentioning we also use the term possession mode i think in there at some point generally when we're talking about that stuff we're talking about when you grab a creature and move it around this is when you're in control when you've possessed this creature in, as a fashion so i don't think first person view or um oh what am i thinking of dungeon keeper style uh possession i'm afraid uh but what we're thinking about is just like what is that behavior what is that kind of interaction when you are being the creature in your hand when you're being your hero um so i just wanted to bring that up we also talk about player presence in the feature requests and that um when we're talking about that what we're talking about is just what makes you um or at least I, I'm very much thinking about it in terms of communication. Because when we're sitting around a table together, there are a lot of things that uh, subtle gestures, kind of micro expressions in the face, like where you look. If you're playing like with miniatures on a board, um, like you've got those on the table and where you look, other people are going to see where you look. And when you're talking about something, they know what you're referring to. There's a lot of stuff that's here that when we do this through a camera, we lose, especially when we're even smaller up in the corner and there's six people. So... There are certain things that we can do to bring some of the kind of expression into the board. So things like GM flashlights were something we added. Um, and they've been pretty good for GMs. But also players want to be able to kind of communicate stuff. We could give everyone a torch. Uh, but if you're in a dark place that's meant to be dark because you're not meant to see things, then giving everyone a torch is kind of dangerous because they could just look around. <laughs> so we're, we're looking into some kind of ping system um and things like that rulers as well are something that will be able to be synced live so you can like i think i showed him one of the dev updates but two screens side by side and the rulers doing the same thing on both and already of course you can gesture with your mini uh, but that isn't always possible for example when you're um in combat mode uh, we're looking into that as well so there are a lot of things around player presence we want to do um so i thought i'd bring that up a big one this what almost certainly won't be there for i don't know actually i don't think this will be there for early access it would be a bit ambitious to try and get in for them but it is something we want um and this is we're calling it subboards at the moment it'll probably have a nicer name we don't really know the idea is you could take a whole bunch of tiles and select them and take like make them one unit it's like they were in their own board 
within the board you're already on. So they'll have their own grid. You'll be able to take that thing and rotate the entire thing and move the whole thing. This came out of a desire for ships. Obviously, people want to do things on high seas and you build yourself a ship and that's great. But then you want to move it and that doesn't really work. There isn't a way to move the tiles. You could cut and paste them, but that also doesn't work because like, I mean, ignoring the fact that right now we don't support um, cutting and pasting creatures, even when we do, like you need to be able to cut something and then paste it on another people. Like you need to be able to paste it as a string, right? Into someone's, into like Tales Bazaar, Tales Tavern and places like that and share these things. Which means you can't copy the unique creatures themselves, the heroes that belong to a particular person. Um, so you end up copying like a clone of them, something with the same look, like the same miniature model, the same stats and things like this, but not exactly the same one. So when you paste it, you've got you wouldn't have your uniques. You'd have to bring those back in. That's going to be very clumsy. So the idea is being able to, yeah, like take this, put them into a unit, and then move them all at once so you could have ships and zeppelins and castles that walk and all these kind of things um, would be at least feasible then. It's an experiment. We're going to see what happens. But it is technically possible. And yeah, not outside the realms of... It's, it's just not outside the realms of possibility. And from a data point of view... Uh, for me in the back end like if you copy and paste a ship with 100 people in it and then I have to update 100 positions on the back end of creatures because we do those separately from boards that's a panic um, and it's a lot easier if I just have to update this one thing that says hey the sub board's moved over here and it's rotated like this now so there's lots of good things we can do with that and uh, yeah we'll just you posted on that one because that is a big one but it's quite an exciting feature and it will allow for some certain kinds of play portals um, they're going to be an extension we think of the bookmark system so the idea is that you can place down a visual manifestation of a connection between two boards and then uh, your players will be able to use it that's still in the design phase we haven't thought too hard about it other than we want it um, so I, I suppose in a way this is the same as it was kind of before the kickstarter we knew we wanted something like portals um, we've started the summoning code now so if you go into the uh, what is it the campaign panel uh, on the left hand side you can go and choose to summon all the players to where you are. And if you right click on one of the bookmark, the uh, marker icons, the GM um, markers, if you right click on that, you can summon them to there. And that also works across boards and things like this. So we already have that tooling, but we don't have something that the player can see that takes them places. And so we need to do some experiments with that and see what makes sense. But it's kind of logical that at the moment, like that it could be some visual element that connects into the bookmark system. We'll see. Um, along with that, uh, we are going to remove the boards panel uh, from the left-hand side for players. Uh, so GMs will have it, but players won't. And the reason is that you start off an adventure in Delightful Happy Land, and everyone is in, you know, like um, Delightful Meadow, Meadow number 15 of Peace and Calm. And then they come back in one session and they open the board list to get to Delightful Medal of Peace, 15 of Calm and things, and whatever I say before that I can't remember. Um, and they see in their Pit of Doom. And it's a bit of a spoiler that something is happening. And we don't really want that. So we could have like player names for boards and GM names for boards and hiding certain boards and all that kind of stuff. Um, but even just seeing that there are other boards there is kind of a giveaway of stuff. So it makes more sense now summoning works that we look into how to just get your players to where you want them to be, like where they were before, and then let you as the GM direct them more. Originally, this was the design, um, but we didn't have that stuff ready, so we had to have the uh, boards thing. I think that was the right order of things. I need some Elixir of Life coffee. Ah, ah yes. I'm already vibrating at a different frequency. Um, let's have a look. What is next? So yes, Creature grouping and polymorph, that's a very interesting thing. Um, it will happen in phases, as with all uh, features. We will get something basic in. We will expand upon it, depending on how it's used and how it is to play. Our current thinking right now is that you'll be able to take some creatures in an area and basically put them onto a single base and then move that base around. Um, it's th This isn't intended to take Tailspire into wargaming. Um, if some people end up using it for that, that's grand. But it's not something that we will be trying to make a great experience for that end. Uh, we'll be trying to make it a good experience for roleplay. So for parties that need to be together or small squads of orcs or things like this, maybe that's going to be a good tool. We're just going to have to see. It definitely has been asked for and we can definitely see where it makes sense. Uh, so that'll be cool. Polymorph will be a separate thing. Um, 
and will allow one base to have um, different visual components uh, that you swap out. So you might have a like a like a normal NPC guy, and then you have a werewolf, and you can swap them out when you want, or you might want to do something uh, with your clerics, or which, whichever. It depends on the rule, like game and rule system, and all this kind of stuff. But there will be options there. Um, again, no promise of timeline on that one, but it is of interest to us, and it's something we haven't really talked about before. Parties. Um, we're looking more into a party being the uh, a kind of more common element within the language of Talespire. So the first things uh, we're going to be doing are making line of sight, fog of war, um, and things like that. those two. I mean, I think that's the main two. <laughs> those two will definitely be party based. And the, this, again, comes from watching people play. Um, when I'm trying to think of a good scenario, if you're with a bunch of people and there are three of the same kind of goblin in the room, amongst other things, but three of the same kind of goblin and Jeff is behind a table, so he can't see one of them. But he can hear that people are talking about the goblins. And he can see two, so those are the goblins. Um, but he can't tell that there are other things going on. Even though, in real life, uh, in real life, if he was behind the table, he would be able to look and see someone aiming across the other side of the room and know that there's something there as well from seeing his friend. Um, also, at the table, um, this kind of gets into the meta gaming things, but you can probably see, like if someone can see a mini, the mini's going to be there. And you'll just say, can I see it? And they're like, no, you can't see it. Okay, so there, there is some stuff that, like in an ideal world, would just let light, we would let line of sight handle it. But because we're not in person, certain things are lost in communication. And this matters to a degree when we're doing video chat, um, but it's even more critical as the speed of uh, interaction goes down. So when we get into chat-only games and things like this, then it can be really, really important that things are very clear. It's better for us to show slightly too much and let the meta handle it than to show too little and cause communication problems because communication problems can ruin the fun, whereas we've been doing role play, uh, pretending what we could see and couldn't see for a long time. So, like, yeah, this is... um. This seems like the reasonable way to do it for now. Also, from uh, my point of view, from the coding side, um, having one set of fog of war for the entire party really helps me in like being able to make <laughs> be able to make it right. Like uh, I'm not multiplying the amount of data per people. We're doing it per party instead. So if you want someone not to like to go off from the party and not see the same fog of war reveals, you could put them in a separate party. That's going to be the idea. We're going to try that out, see how it goes, and. Uh, yeah, it's going to be really interesting. And it might also affect... Um, one of the requests was about not letting your players go too far in the board because they can just go and spoil the game for themselves. So something I, I personally want to experiment with is what if we say that you can only move your camera as a player 20 units from the perimeter of where everyone's creature in the party is. So there's a this is an important distinction, actually. Um, creatures are member of parties, not players. Um, and that matters a lot. So a player might have multiple creatures. Um, it's interesting. So yes, there, there, before I ramble too much about that, where are we up to? Oh, we're going up to half an hour. So far, so good. Um, so that is parties. Yes. Uh, persistent rulers or indicators or whatever we end up calling them. Um, so rulers will be landing soon. And they're pretty cool. Uh, or at least I think they are going to be pretty cool. Um, being able to show ranges, areas, things like this is really nice. Uh, it's obviously critical to be able to play a lot of these systems. Um, and Tailspire has a level of verticality which most uh, roleplay experiences don't have. Um, like, outside of, like, I mean, Tabletop Simulator does an awesome job at this as well. Like, but, like, you're not in 2D. <laughs> And suddenly, like, position, like, verticality matters so much more. It's very, very obvious, at least, um, from my point of view. I'm, I'm, I'm rambling. I don't want to make any too big claims. I'm trying to go off mainly what we've heard back from people. But, yeah, verticality is super important. And so, line, um, so that ruler system needs to be able to handle things in 3D really well. That's coming along. Um, but there's rulers as a means of demonstration and a means of communication, uh, because rulers, like we said before, are synced. Um... But then there is also um, being able to put down, like, oh, this area has, like, this region of space has time slowed down. How do we demonstrate that? 
Well, the ruler is a transient tool. It's something you show and then you put it away. We need markers uh, to indicate these kind of things. And that is something we're going to experiment with. And it probably will be intimately connected to rulers somehow. Um, it will probably be a GM-only tool. Um, so the world just doesn't get full up with indicators. But we'll see. We'll just, uh, we're going to try that out. But we feel it's going to be something that's going to be important. So it was worth shouting out about. Photo mode. Here's another one. Cool. This is awesome. Um, I just saw it. Sorry, I just looked over chat. Uh, Brother Panan, um, please do uh, put the exclamation mark Q in front because that's a good question and I won't see it uh, by the time I get to the, que the Q&A portion if you don't do that. Um, photo mode. Yeah. Um, people are making some awesome stuff in uh, Tailspire and wanting to show it off. And the DLL hacking folks have done an awesome job at, like hacking in cameras that give more views and things like this. Um, we need a dedicated photo mode. It's something we want to do. Um, and it's really nice to have it as a separate thing because our camera has to be optimized for two things, for building and play, right? And the places where those things overlap. Um, that has got to be our focus. We've got to make it good for that. And like obviously there are a lot of things right now that we still need to do. We've talked about that in previous devlogs and also in the um, feature request stuff. We know we need to iterate on that. Um, but yeah, like longer term, the idealized thing is you make the perfect camera system for the actual play that's being involved 99% of the time. But still want to show off your cool stuff. And I, I'm not, and uh, maybe cinematic mode has some stuff that it borrows from photo mode as well. No guarantees on that. That's just me kind of spitballing here. But yes, yeah, so we want a dedicated photo mode. That allows us to do different things that don't make sense with, uh, within the standard camera system and will allow you to take kind of really cool shots, like moody shots to put on uh, your shared slabs and boards when we get board sharing in. So that's really cool. So those were the things that, um, amongst all of the feature requests, we haven't talked as probably as much before. Oh, no, there's one more. There's one more. But anyway, I'll, I'll wrap this up more no, let's do it the right way around. Okay, visual effects system. That's the last thing. We want, it's going to be a GM tool for one-shot summoning of effects. So you want a puff of smoke, a lightning bolt, things like, things of that kind of ilk where you go pick it out the palette, deploy it, everyone sees it, it's really cool. Then, like, so it's it's flavor, it's juice for your story. Um, we will be adding that. That's actually, we're hoping to get in uh, the first version for early access. We'll see how that goes. Um... Okay, so yes, those were the things. Those were the things that we wanted to uh, just bring up. Kind of uh, things that we haven't talked as much about before. Um, or, um, that were in the feature request list. Or things that... Um, what do I want to say? Things that were kind of like terminology... Excuse me. Uh, terminology that was in uh, the document that... I guess is, we're more used to using internally, but not, might not have talked about in that way outside. So yes, that's where we are. Okay. Um, no's. We said no's to some things. Um, a lot of them were things we said no to before. In fact, the things I'm going to mention are things we've mostly said no to before. Um, PDFs and web browsers uh, in the inside the game. We don't want multiple overlapping windows. We we we're, we are we're building a game, um, and we don't think if we can't build an experience that is at least like as good or better than the experience you're getting in the other program, why not use the other program? Why are we going to dedicate uh, resources to that? So we're not going to make a better web browser than a web browser. So let's just make sure we can tab out to things really easily and use those. Um, for now, Steam has the embedded web browser, so you can use that. I'm not sure what future options will be. I'm sure some will mod things in, so it's possible anyway. But it's not something we're looking at doing. Um, when we want to address character sheet type stuff we will do it in a way specific to tales but we'll do it in a, a more gamey way there's a lot of ui that has come through the games that have been made over the last numerous decades that we can pull from to make something that feels nice and we can get motivated about because at the end we're gonna have to make this thing and if it sucks like if our job sucks we're not gonna want to do it <laughs> so uh, we've got to like find that balance uh, because we have this thing that we know we need to make and some of it is out already. Like some of it you can kind of see and it's definitely attracted a bunch of people, which we're really happy to have you. Um, but yeah, we've got to kind of follow that. The thread that led us here, we've got to keep following it because there's more. Um, so that's really cool. First person view, it's not something we're looking to do. But again, if you want to just get, if it's so you can get a certain kind of shot, 
uh, look out for photo mode when we get that in. Uh, orthographic, no. Like, we love the look we're kind of slowly building. Um, it's not there completely, but it is, like, we want more variety, obviously. But uh, when we, we've we seen people hack in orthographic, and all it did was reinforce how much we didn't want it. Um, it does not look right for us. Just a personal thing. Oh, the last one, the last big one that always comes up, free placement of tiles. Currently, tiles are tied to a grid. And so there are questions about, can we place tiles anywhere, rotate them anywhere? Can we, um, or the, the kind of like the middle ground one that comes up when I say no, is can we have a half sized grid instead? So let me talk about that for a second. Um, the answer is still no, um, but I will talk a bit about why. First thing is on the data side, tiles require a reasonable amount of data. We're talking like a smallish number of bytes, but it still requires data per tile. And there are meant to be hundreds and thousands of them. So, you know, like like hundreds, hundreds of thousands, not hundreds and thousands of them. Oh, only a thousand tiles. That would be so easy. That would be a di totally different game. No, we're talking hundreds of thousands up to millions of tiles. And, uh, and when we're talking about like, if you were going to use those for terrains, there would be literally <laughs> millions and millions and millions of tiles. Uh, and you just can't fight how much data that requires in the end. And there are different ways. And if someone wants to say Octree at me, I will point you at documents <laughs> and we will have a conversation. Uh, actually, of the people that um, are interested in that kind of thing, there's a site called Zero FPS. Uh, I think I noted it down here, um, who did an article on, let's see if I can find it. Yes, an, an, an analysis of Minecraft-like engines. Go see why they don't use uh, Octrees for that. But anyway. Um, yes, there is. it just requires quite a bit of data, um, and so we need to look into other things. This is why we haven't made a tile for water, because if you start pulling out tens of thousands of it, just the rate it scales, given that you need to download this board, or if you're, once we get peer-to-peer, -peer, you need to be able to pull it from your friend, right? that starts becoming prohibitive very quickly. And we could just unlock, like we could do that today, we could unlock the range today and say, hey, look, we support the thing that we said we were going to support, but it would be totally unfeasible because boards would be gigabytes and gigabytes if you tried to do like end to end with tiles. We will work on this. We will make developments. But the answer really is to look into more sparse, um, like data wise, sparse um, things to build the world out of. And that's going to be a lot to do with the train system and stuff like this. So no, we will not be making water tiles and we um, won't be doing things on like freely positioned but because it, it will require even more data per tile. With that out of the way, there's the question of the half grid. We prototyped this. It was said a lot. We prototyped it to see if we were just wrong on our theory about that, and we weren't. Uh, it didn't feel... Well, it actually felt worse. It felt worse. Uh, it made everything fiddlier. You would need a different style, in our opinion. You would want a slightly different kind of tooling to make building in that really nice. There are, um, amongst our community, there's some brilliant builders and i know that you could go and do even more precise things with a finer grid um but we have to support a variety of styles of play that we definitely have people who are building as artists inside tailspire um and there are definitely other people who are building spaces which are arguably more playable where you you can build for a look and you can also build for the movement that happens within inside or within a space and they're different skills and they're both super valid right like it is it is possible to do both it's possible for that line to move backwards and forwards and i love seeing the creations and i love seeing the different styles of creations that are coming out of this we marvel at it like internally just all the time it's it's bonkers to see what you folks are making and um yeah we need to make sure we support different styles of play. And because in the end, Tailspire is made to be like, we've got a space for telling stories. So beyond the building, once the building is done, right, we have to play. And so we just need to make sure we're optimizing for that. So when we did the half grid, none of the problems went away. They just became smaller. It's like in the places that you wanted to be able to put a half tile, now you wanted to be able to put a corner tile. In the places where certain walls didn't quite work in the way you wanted, now it was thinner walls. Now it was just different feature sets. And yeah, it just got fiddlier and it didn't get better. And it wasn't a game we were exciting about making when we tried it. So that is not happening. Um, but we are still looking into stuff. And I'm going to talk about props. So keep an ear out for that because um, we're going to be doing prop system stuff soon. Um, we will be talking about that. Yeah, cool. Um, and as I mentioned before, uh, limitations are important in a space. When you're when you're creating a creative tool, 
um, you're trying to like trying to let people tell stories and make beautiful things to play within um, we want that to be accessible and that doesn't mean dumbing everything down uh, but it does mean understanding the workability of the medium and just like just yeah really focusing on what it actually feels like to play and what the like yeah I i'm rambling at this point let me continue right honorable mention honorable, honorable the very honorable mentions uh go to streamer mode which is still coming um we want to do it you want to have it we'll, we'll see what we can do um it'll come uh internet internationalization accessibility i put these here because i just want you to know we care about them we want to get there um we've got to work out more of the architecture but um they're coming like we just have to do it um we want as many people being able to tell their stories as possible it's yeah yeah i can't loop back on hammer on that enough so but so i just wanted to mention it here we did want to do it before we still want to do it now uh tinting we are still planning on doing creature tinting we've thought about uh obviously you saw the might have seen the prototype video before where it was tinting other player and it looked really cool um that was being done live in a shader and then we decided that so what are you going to want to do you're going to, like when, when is one of the places that will be it'll be used well one is just on your hero maybe you want to customize some things but the place after individuals is groups so say you're in a castle and you have the royal guard so you take a knight and you tend a few things and like right that's my knight that's the royal guards garb all right now we're going to copy like a hundred of these guys around everywhere and so once you're doing that like the cost per like i'm, I'm thinking about the rendering costs and stuff like this uh really start to matter so what we can do is we can take the tinting changes and bake them out and we can just we can do clever stuff so there are trade-offs and things that we can make to keep instancing working well to keep yeah to uh to, to make sure that this is going to scale in a way that makes sense so we're looking into that um we still need to finalize that system or we need to finalize the design make the system uh, then we will start going through all of the creatures and adding the information required for the tinting system to work. That will be done over a long period of time. So what you'll see in updates is, you know, like NPC5 now can be tinted. Dragon can now be tinted. And we'll do this over a long period of time. Um, and that's fine. We also should shout out to um, other operating system support. It's not something we're looking into yet, which is something we said in the Kickstarter. It wasn't something that's in our short-term goals. It wasn't something we were doing before early access. But one thing we can do is we can um, we can actually start looking into it. Most of the things where the problem is, is like in an ideal world, you would just rebuild it for that platform and everything would just work. But my experience is that never happens. Almost never <laughs> happens. And I, I, again, I've done some, I have some experience in tooling for cross-platform development. And even just simple things, just like, oh, you've gone from, like, you were using things in, even when it's still, like, for the programmers out there, even when it's still .NET, you can find differences between implementations and versions and things which you think just wouldn't be a problem, which suddenly are. Um, there might be a bug that's different in one than in other, and you've got workarounds which rely on certain behaviors. It can get messy. And also, there's just stuff like, is the, like, we have our bugs and we have Unity's bugs. Like, and that's true for not just Unity, but any system you decide to use. There are going to be quirks. Maybe they haven't tested it as much on Mac. We need to explore, but we can we can start doing experiments. I just want to mention that we haven't forgotten you, um, but it's still on the same kind of roadmap as before. Um, doot, 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 doot. Okay, so now let's talk about some of the stuff we need to do that has like this is where it's going to uh, like probably a little more technical and uh things that are just on our minds and very much including some of the scary stuff some of the unknowns some of the things that we just like we don't really know how this is going to go so let me have a drink of water to make that moment extra tense and uh, i'll watch some of the questions scrolling by it's lovely to see you all here i need to tell how many people we got in chat at the moment i probably shouldn't look because i'm just going to scare myself but um it is very cool to be doing this again 108 blimey okay hello um awesome right so one of the things we need to do is this one isn't as scary this is just a, a, a thing that's worth knowing that we have to do uh because it adds context to some of the other stuff is we need to pin a unity version we need to pick which unity version we're going to be shipping with and that's quite an interesting challenge actually uh the reason we have to do this is because 
Uh, the mods are going to be shipping as Unity prefabs. So you're going to be building these, exporting these Unity assets um, that will then be used in the game. We need to keep that working and we need to keep it working over a long period of time because if we change that up or if it changes, uh, we might need to re-export them. And once the modding community is big enough, which is like I've seen you people, there are going to be so many mods. Um, yes, we don't want to have to force everyone to rebuild all of them and potentially damage kind of the, the ecosystem that's already forming. But there are trade-offs, right? Anytime you, you stop getting new updates, you are falling behind of all the fixes that they're providing and the new features and the performance upgrades and all that kind of stuff. And when it comes to performance, it's a very interesting one. The problem is right now we have a long-term support version which is out, so we could go with that. Um, but again, that, that means that... Like, that's a nice stable place to be um, rather than going into... Like basing the early access on a beta version of Unity, um, we're gonna have to see. So that's that's the kind of things that we've got in our mind right now about that. We are gonna have to make that decision, uh, and we can't ship the modding before we do that. So we're probably gonna leave it fairly late to do that before the early access because, like, if it turns out we need absolutely need something, then we can change the version, and we can run through the issues, the new issues that we find with any new system. And then we can get ourselves set up and make sure that we don't do damage to the community for a fix. Um, the next one is <laughs> kind of on me. Um, so I looked at, we need to scale. We need to get our performance needs to be a lot better and we need to get bigger on everything. And that was always in the plan. Um, I was looking at some of the new tooling that Unity was providing. And even though it was in preview, and it still is in preview, um, I was looking at what they were able to do and was going, okay, that's probably in the right order of magnitude of complexity of where we'll be, that this will be a very good solution to what we need to do. And um, so when I'm talking about this for the people who follow kind of uh, Unity type development stuff, I'm talking about the uh, dot stack, the uh, data oriented tech stack. Um, a lot of things they're doing right now to really help with performance and things like this. And it is very cool. The bits that are stable, this, this is so obvious, but the bits that are stable are amazing, right? The job system that they've put in there, I really enjoy the burst compiler and all that kind of stuff that's in there is great. And we're using it heavily in Tailspire. It makes certain things possible that we just wouldn't have been able to do before uh, without like significant engineering outside of Unity. So it's great. Um, really happy with it. But some one of the things that we wanted to use was the entity system, which was still in preview, is still in preview. And I thought it was a bit further along than it was, or it would be a bit further along than it was. And we kind of made a gamble based on that. Um, so when we first saw it, they were showing their Mega City demo with all these assets and all these things going on. And it's like, okay, that's cool. But one of the things it's missing right now is, um, again, this is going to be more for the technical people, uh, per instance, data um, wasn't like just wasn't available at that point. So when we're rendering all this stuff, when we have, um, so let's just bring up an example. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. Let's go over here. Right. We have lots of tiles. Lots of the tiles are the same tile. And so rather than telling the GPU, hey, draw this, draw this, draw this, so many times for the same object, what we do is we say, hey, we want you to draw this. We want you to draw it a thousand times. And here is where all, all the information is of like where to position it and what other data needs to be associated with that thing. And it's that extra data that needs to be associated with that thing, which is the per instance data, um, that wasn't supported at the time. When it was supported, which it is supported now, oh, shout out to, uh, to this is this is obviously community content. Woo. Um, you're going to have to deal with my face again, actually. Let's jump back to will this work. Boop. Okay, when that was supported, um, it came at actually quite a big performance hit for the initial version. And that's where we are right now. Remember, they are in the beta of that stuff too. It's a preview release. It's not meant to be like shipping quality yet and so the fact that there was a performance regression perfectly understandable but it affects us um so <laughs> i just saw someone saying uh mod city baby yeah respect to mod city uh you guys are amazing um anyway right focus um so yeah things aren't like they're definitely like we threw um some unity test scenes into the entity system and we saw good rendering performance improvements very very encouraging um and we saw some other things that didn't look great and we saw some uh, basically it's just stuff that isn't quite ready yet but the beauty of this stuff is you can see the code behind the scenes in unity 
Um, so we can see what they're using in the public API to drive all the rendering. And we have access to that too, which is great, which means we can take the kind of restrictions that we have, like, hey, we're operating on this grid and things like this, and we can look at that and, and, and also the frequency with which data inside is updated. And we can potentially um, like have the data prepared in way that makes ways that makes things faster. I'm trying to really try and avoid getting too technical on this, but um, yes, basically we have a lot of opportunities and we need to prototype them. Uh, but we didn't get out of the box as much as we thought we were going to get by this point in the year. Um, then and there are some big glaring gaps. Like there is not a an animation system that is dots ready yet. And yes, there is Unity dot like uh, animation or whatever it's called, but if you've tried using it, you know it's rough right now. And it's it's like in alpha. So it makes sense where it is, but it doesn't mean it's ready for us to use. But that's fine. Like the kind of animations we have so far on tiles, and this is tile specific that we're talking about now, now tiles and props, not creatures. Um, the things that we need there are actually pretty simple right now. So we can just write in a system uh, for handling that. But it's extra work, right? So we've gone from this place where we thought we could rely on something. We made a gamble and it hasn't paid off. So, but we've got enough information to hopefully do a better job. Things are coming along um, well there. I've been talking a lot about kind of rendering improvements and uh, performance stuff. And a lot of it centered around that. So that is something that might be interesting to you. <laughs> um, let's get on to the next. Actually, before I continue, one thing I will throw in there is for early access... We are not looking at being good perform like having good performance on embedded GPUs, right? So think Intel GPUs in laptops and stuff like this. Dedicated GPU, we should be able to do a good job. Embedded GPUs, we aren't going to be able to make it great on that yet. Um, kind of a, a behind the scenes story, which I hope will make sense because obviously we have to remove, we have to redact names out of this. But we know we have friends who have who are in a games company and they had to ship a title and they needed it to run well on those GPUs. And they had, they spent a month and a half with Intel engineers in-house um, helping them do all that kind of stuff amongst other things. But like, it took professionals time to make something that was optimized to that GPU. And they're they're kick-ass pieces of kit, but we would need to spend time on it. And I, uh, like we make some kind of, kind of, We've made some fairly wild, um, what's that? Proposals? What, what's the thing like? Um, like claims of when when we're going to be able to ship certain things, and we're trying to do it, but I think that is way out of our ability in the time frame that we've got. So we're not going to try and do that for now. So we're going to say, yeah, we should be able to run well on dedicated, uh, but your mileage may vary on Intel GPUs, or at least, again, like if you're trying to build really big things. So we'll get to it. We'll get to it. It's not a, a like it's not a showstopper. It's just context. Okay. So where do we want to go from there? Props. The prop system is probably the thing that we've gone back and forwards on the most. We've almost shipped it. I think I can't remember. It's two or three times now. Um, it's really tricky. Originally, it's um, yeah. So the idea that we wanted to have for ages was we wanted something that was more granular, obviously, than uh, just the tiles. Uh, because at the moment, all the things that are under the props section are just regular tiles, and they have all the same limitations of tile that tiles do. So what can we do about that? How can we improve it? Um, one of the things we're thinking of doing, and this has been the plan for a very long time, is attachment points. So you, I'm sure you've bought toys before, which uh, as a kid like will have little holes, little pegs, and you can like slot a sword into the hole. And yeah, and that's an attachment point, right? And you might be able to clip on a shield and all these kind of things. Um, we were going to let you do that. So in the modding setup, and we might still do this, by the way, in the modding setup, you when you were when you're setting up your tile in Tailweaver, you would be able to pick attachment points, up to sixteen of them, um, and that would be something you could snap one prop onto. And then the prop it would have a position and a direction. And the idea is you would click the prop on, and then you could rotate that prop uh, like sixteen uh, positions. So like what's that, twenty two degrees of time? I'm not really sure. Um, around. Uh, that direction and that was compact in data and fit into the system and all that kind of stuff um but we've obviously been watching you build and we've obviously been experimenting with things because people have like say why can't we just have free positioning and i've talked about free positioning before but we've done experiments 
and obviously we see the appeal like if we could have everything we would um like if it all felt good we'd want to shoot for it um but the prop thing so like again we're just not convinced now we need to we need to convince ourselves that attachments are the right thing and so we need to do other experiments and that's what's happening right now uh we've got um johnny's amongst as he has a bunch of different systems prototypes going on right now of different things um so best of luck to him because <laughs> he's gonna work out how to make it feel good but yeah it's still up in the air and props have implications right um depending on what we decide works best and that we can achieve that's going to inform data is going to inform um gameplay things it's going to inform yeah a, a lot of stuff so it is it is it's a scary thing for us right now, but just because we just got to know we need to do it. We need to find an answer and then we need to stick with it. <laughs> Johnny's laughing. Well, thanks. Yep. Sorry, bud. <laughs> um, and then, yeah, we, we need to deal with all the repercussions that flow downstream from that. We'll keep you posted. That's the best we can do. Uh, but yes, ideally, we thought we would be further along with props right now. Um, oh, we all believe in Johnny. He's awesome. Um, yeah, we thought we'd be further along with props right now, but we aren't. Um, and it's coming from really just looking at the reality of building and just going, ah, maybe there's something we can do. Yeah, I, I won't dwell on that more at the moment. Terrain. Terrain is in a similar position. We are designing it. We're prototyping it. We're trying to find that, that place uh, where it makes sense. Um, there are a lot of things that you can say very easily, uh, which are like just to do, right? Just have a height map, but then you can't have caves. Just have Minecraft terrain. But then, you know, there are trade-offs and things there. Does that does that feel right? We, de we decided one of the things, like, Minecraft is consistent, right? It has a consistency to its world, and that has its beauty, and it makes sense within itself. If you have, um, if, if I can press buttons, if you have this, and then and this kind of fidelity, and then you have a mountain, which is in steps, does that work? Is that right? Does that make us feel good and make us kind of driven to keep making it? Um, these are, uh, yeah, these are the questions. And um, so we're exploring terrain things. And right now it's very much not looking like that. Like when, like it's not the thing that fits with Tailspire. Um, of course, you can, you can keep on throwing. I'm sure there's technical people right now who are typing things like uh, marching cubes and dual contouring. And yeah, we play with those. Um, and they are tools, but they tools do not a game make. Um, we have to find the experience in there as well. So yeah, we're working on it. Um, we'll keep you posted, and yeah, it's uh, it, it's a, it's very exciting. But um, within the terrain system, we'll also have uh, the water system, which is basically a, a, the thought is right now that it's basically made of the same stuff. We're, we're um, reasonably confident that we can do this, so that's cool. Um, the big thing with terrain, from again from the data side, is that it can be a lot sparser, so we don't have to have all the per tile data. So in a big field can be a lot smaller in memory which means a lot less to push across the network and all these kind of things um yeah we'll keep you posted um doot 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 what's next um i've got some notes on design philosophy we actually already talked about that quite a bit um board size board size is still a risk um yeah like uh what i mean what else is there to say about that like it's we, we, we picked a measurement uh, that was probably bigger than we should have picked. Um, yeah, we'll just see what we can do. <laughs> yeah, it, it's, it's, it's feasible. We, did, we picked it because it was feasible. Um, but there are, or at least we thought it was feasible. Um, it can still be done. Uh, but it might just take, we might go in smaller increments up to the size we want it to be. It's re it, there's so much that just depends on how certain things come out. And the other thing that we haven't um, really tried yet is when we have these big boards, when you can build for like 10 kilometers, 20 kilometers, whatever it is, does it feel good, right? Does like what tooling makes that experience good? Do you want to build those kind of things? Because our original idea was very much smaller boards. And that's, I know when we play internally, we play on smaller boards generally. Like we have moments and we let um, storytelling move between those. We don't tend to build huge boards. And so when we support that, it's going to be interesting to see if it makes sense. Um, I, you're kind of along for the ride on this, uh, with us on that one. Uh, we'll just see how it goes. Um, but yeah, that's a, that's a nerve-wracking thing, uh, just making all that work. 
but most of the things that need to be done to make really big boards work have to be done to make medium-sized boards work as well. So, you know, we'll see how it goes, um, but fairly confident. Scripting, I'll just throw that out there. Um, what do we need to do there? It's going to be like, I mean, we've already always said that the scripting system that will be available for the early access will be very basic and that we'll expand it over time. Um, that is still true. Um, I know that I won't have time for, for working much on the scripting system for a while yet. Um, so yeah, the, the most important thing for modding when we ship and for the early access is that you can get models in there. It's the 3D asset side. You can get tiles, you can get um, creatures, probably dice, like that kind of stuff you need to be able to get in there. Scripting is a, a really nice to have, don't get me wrong. But we could ship with just the kind of interactions we have right now. Um, it's it's just we're just going to have to take it as it comes. It's more important that we make a solid early access than we have all of those features straight away. Um, okay, um, let's have a look. Do, 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 do. Board size, and then we just need to make it feel good. <laughs> There's so many things right now that are like um, there are certain elements of building that feel really nice. There are certain elements of play that feel really good. Uh, it's been so heartening to hear your stories. It's really, really cool. We share them internally and we love it. When we hear about people who have been playing for 20 years and they're, this is the first time they found something that they enjoy playing online together. And when there's someone who's their first time and they're with people who have experience playing the game and they're enjoying it and they're, it's working. That is, it's just so nice to know that this this is... Um, that what works for us is working elsewhere as well. We're It's a good track. We're happy. But we've got a lot of work to do to the feel of the game that uh, is been something that fe fe falls beside the wayside uh, too much just out of necessity of to keep on building so that is the scary stuff and with that i've kind of come to the end of my little list so what i need to do i suppose is to um get on to discord on this little machine here and bring up your questions and we will start going through them so just give me a second while i do that um, I won't. Will I do it in Ripcord? Maybe I can do that. Let's see. Um, I normally have this interface way too small to be practical, so I think it's going to be quicker just to go to Discord. Hold tight, loading Discord. Oh, good. And then it will start beeping at me. Let's not have that. Okay, and now I need to find the channel where we hide all the questions. And there are quite a few. All right, let's make sure I am not... Okay, good. I almost scrolled back into those questions from, like, the previous stream. That would have been a bit carp. Okay. Mercer, when will you be adding more cheese models? Um, as the gods dictate. Um, <laughs> there's, there's a couple of very cheese-focused questions in here already. Is the cheese monster a hero or a creature? Um, I mean, that's really dependent on your stories, isn't it? Um, we have some test questions. Uh, oh, whoever the moderator is that are ticking the ones I've answered, you are a star. Thank you. Um, how long do you think it will be um, it will be before you release the measuring tools you've been working on to the users as soon as it feels nice. So we like very much hope that the current version that we're working on ends up feeling good. Otherwise, we will throw it away and we will start it again. Um, but it's probably going to be okay. I'm going to move these questions slightly more in my eye line so I can look this far rather than... Because um, that's a bit much. Right. Is there a way to have more than four stats, or is it in the plans? Oh, right, yeah. Uh, there, well, right now, there isn't a way to get more than that. Um, but yes, it is in the plans. And it's one of those things that, like, think about that radial menu. If we put too much more there, it's going to get really ugh. But we used to have some um, other kinds of pop-up menu uh, in our early prototypes before it was called Tailspire, I think. Um, so, yeah. There's definitely things we can do there. And also some of that will bridge into the rule system and things like that, which are post-early access. Um, yes. Yeah, things like that. Um, 
Is it coming to Switch? No plans for that right now, I'm afraid. Uh, that would be dope, though, wouldn't it? I, I'm just... <laughs> Like, you think you have poor performance problems on a desktop, wait until you have to start developing for, like, a more constrained platform. Uh, yeah, that'll be tough. Okay, can we have permastates for emotes so we can enable it and keep going? Yes, things like um, being knocked out when the mini falls over and lies down, that is a, a persistent state. Um, we're also going to be looking into kind of status modifiers. I think, um... Uh, what's an idea? Like, like some of the Final Fantasy ones, I guess. Like, I think of FF9. Um... That will come in time. I don't think we're doing the status one straight away, but we will have the kind of state-based uh, emotes are coming. Johnny will shout at me if I'm wrong, I think. Uh, is there a timeline um, to porting in 3D models like STL files? Okay, so um, as soon as Tailweaver is out, which will be close to uh, the release, like, like I was saying before, once we can lock down the Unity version and then we can develop the modding tools to that and then we can release it, which will be close to uh, early access release time. Um, then you'll be able to import the kinds of models that Unity supports. I can't remember them off my head, but like 3DS and FBX and all those kind of things. OBJ, things that are put out by programs like Blender. Um, STLs, I don't think are supported out of the box. You'd want to put them through something, but that actually is fine because STLs are most commonly used for 3D prints, right? Um, and the kind of resolution, like mesh resolution that you have on 3D prints is very different from the kinds of meshes you'd want in a game. And so you're going to want to do some down poly, kind of downscaling some of that stuff anyway. Um, also, an SDL file probably doesn't have a textures on it. And so you're going to want some of those before you put it in the game too, most likely. Um, do, do, do. Any idea where Fog of, when Fog of War will be released? No, actually. I, like I, To be honest, anything that's related to, do you have a timeline for this? The answer is no. Um, because... One of the beauties of being a small company is just the flexibility we can take on a more day-to-day -day basis and, and ticket-by-ticket -ticket basis. Um, so, okay, let's let's see if I can work out what I need for Fog of War. Um, so I very much I very much want to understand to uh, have nailed down what we're doing with the rendering side of things before we would be close to doing the Fog of War stuff. Also, we need to make the shaders that actually make Fog of War look good rather than just big blocks everywhere. Um, and address things like how, obviously, at certain positions it can be Zed fighting and all these kind of things. We need we need to do a lot of experiments there. It still needs work. But the good bit is that we can move... St we've done the one of the technical parts, right? Like, we can move something and we can update um, the, the fog... Um, I still need to sync that fog, the, the, chain, the fog updates, uh, the fog state has to be synced across the network. Um, each 16 by 16 by 16 region, um, which has fog in it, is a 512 um, byte mask, basically. There's 512 bytes of information that need to be synced. Um, it is very amenable to compression, so I will be looking at something that is fast for that. It's probably a brand that decoding thing i'll try it first and just see what we can get out of it um before we kick that across the network so we will see there um yeah so that's there's, there's quite a bit still to do uh, on fog of war but it is there's all it all feels like known problems right like it's it's there's not like deep research that needs to be done there um um yes um, Johnny, I'm, I uh, just to let you know I missed your messages early on, but we will definitely get around on that one. Um, yes, keep going through the questions. I live stream my. Let's have a look. I live stream my D and D five E game using Tailspire, and I'm promoting my stream at DragonCon this year. Do you have any licensing requirements? Uh, for playing ad videos of my stream um, that will have the music from Tailspire playing in the background. No. Um, stream, present, just, uh, yeah. Yeah, you, you, you can use Tailspire in those events. I don't think we have anything. Um, well, at least I'm certainly not aware of anything right now. I don't think we've got anything like that. Go ahead. Like, it's the same as streaming, really, isn't it? Just, we just say go for it. Yeah. Play that music. Um, let me keep scrolling through. Um, 
Is there an estimate for the early access and Tailweaver? Uh, if not, is there any guidance on how we might reverse engineer the character file format so we can start boarding custom uh, minis now? No, we can prov we can provide information on kind of the um, sizes of mesh, like like poly counts and things like this. I think we already do that on the modding channel. Um, the format is the what are we? It's uh, I mean we're using we're using Unity's asset bundles, but um that doesn't tell you the kind of tail spire specific stuff. Um, no, I think is the answer right now. We can definitely like, there's definitely modeling that can be done. Shout out, basically come to the modding channel, shout out to um, Rian Dwarf and uh, people who are already there will help you find the information we've already got out as well. Um, how many emotes for various conditions coming, po uh, coming? poisoned, prone, etc. Um, I, I actually don't know that. Um, that'll be one for Johnny. Um, I don't think that's even finalized yet, but yeah. Um, let's have a look. Um, it's a question that didn't go through. Are there any assets you've already decided will be part of the paid rather than free asset packs? No, uh, not that I'm aware of, but again, I'm not, I, I am but a humble coder. I don't know as much about the asset things. Um, the main thing we want to do is we want to just to have a fully fledged. We want you to be able to buy Tailspire and to be able to play like a a decent range of games. Like there has to be different biomes, there has to be different a good selection of creatures. I know this is very vague, but it's kind of like uh, it sounds like a we'll know it when we see it kind of thing. But yes, like we're we've got plans to flesh out a certain amount, um, and then when things get very specific, like ah uh, yes, I, I, we can have a vampire special set you know like where we go into much more kind of details and varieties of things and maybe that would count as something to be more of paid ass but again we'll, we'll just see uh we'll keep you posted on that one but as we like if people didn't know through the early access all of the uh, asset packs will continue to be free uh because we are not going to ship with everything we want um in early access but by version one we want to have that fully fleshed out thing um yeah, so in that case, the plan hasn't changed. Um, do, do, do. Triggers. What if a player picks up a token on one side of the trigger and places it on the other side of the token? Is it based on the path the player moves? Um, or will it be based on the path from pick location to place location? Good question. Don't have an answer to that yet, actually. But, um, well, depending on the shape of the region, um, that would actually be very easy to check. So that's... It's a good question. That is like that, those would be one of the kinds of things that we need to answer during making this feature. And one of the things we could just do is based on per frame where the uh, collision capsule of the creature is, and if it intersects it, um, and then we send a broadcast thing out going, "I'm stuck." Um, or maybe we want to do it um, in the way you mentioned, like do a kind of capsule cast from beginning to end. Like um, I think you'd. It's a really good question, isn't it? Because it has implications on play. Like if you, you're moving along and then suddenly it hits, uh, but if it only happens when you let go, there are trade-offs both ways, aren't there? I think you need to have it in real time as it hits. Otherwise, you could just pass through the trigger and then drop and be on the other side of the thing the trigger was meant to be stopping you reaching. So yeah, it's interesting. Um, trigger sound cool. Can we have an API so we can create extensions? Uh, and eventually, we do want it involved in the scripting system. Might not be there to begin with. Uh, the scripting system is going to be very basic when we start. Um, any idea what we can see more miniatures and when we can see more miniatures and building assets as soon as they're built? Um, yeah, there's more being made right now. Um, so yeah, obviously, big shout out to uh, Jason and Hannah and Rachel, who are amazing our team. Uh, they have been doing incredible stuff. They've been doing everything you've been seeing so far, um, and they have they're doing that in as a part time gig. So uh, yeah, that's incredible. Like after their day jobs. That's, uh, yeah, mad respect to them because they've been doing great work. Um, okay, I play an RPG with a tick system, so a knife needs an attack time of five and a large sword needs 11 ticks. So if it, so the knife had, oh, it's there we go, second part. Uh, the knife could take two actions before the sword is able to act. Could this be within your turn order? A, not now. <laughs> Definitely not now. Uh, that's like like you say. There's uh, things get really complicated uh, when you start including different systems. Um, we are going to have a round ticker. 
um, that the GM can use and will be hooked into the combat, the uh, turn-based mode. Um, but more complicated than that, not in the plan yet. Um, but it's probably one of those things that's going to come up as we start digging into rule systems, especially. Uh, we're going to have to look at stuff. Um, and so, yeah, I guess we will have this. We'll, like, I think there's going to be another dev stream when we get into that place and we'll have these kind of discussions again, I guess. Um, how is a subboard different from grouping? Um, I suppose in couldn't grouping solve everything that subboards hoping to achieve? It sounds like we're just talking about names at that point. Unless you describe what grouping means, um, like then, because I, I could group a set of tiles, but they'll still be tied to the grid, right? Um, so if we, yeah, like that, that's actually an example. Let's let's say, um, do do do, press some buttons. Um, let's say I pick like a whole bunch of tiles. Let's just do, 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 do. I pick all these tiles and I group them. Um, if they're grouped, maybe they act as one, like one big tile, but they would still be tied to this grid. They're still like connected within this system. Is that what we want? It's definitely not what I want for ships. Um, I want to be able to take these and turn them. But in this system, like by using it as one thing, yeah, maybe our pathfinding system would work across between here and here. Um, which isn't something I think will work immediately between boards and subboards. But yeah, so I, I think there is a difference from just straight grouping, unless you imply more by grouping than I do. So I think, yeah, we're discussing kind of naming and things like this. Um, but yeah, have you considered a scratch type system to allow people to choose their level of complexity? Um, their own the scratch type system their own level of complexity okay when i'm looking when i'm thinking scratch i'm thinking about that programming language uh with the connected together blocks um so i am probably thinking about the wrong thing so do let me know um i'll come back i'll i'll see your um amendment to that question lower down i guess um since tiles will never be allowed to be resized will props fall into the same camp or will props be adjusted allow for re resizing for it's cool, right? Like props, it definitely makes more sense to us than tiles, and it's something we're thinking about. Um, it really depends on what it depends on what conclusions we come to about the prop system. Um, but yeah, we were really good, right? You could take some, like if you had a boot, and you could make a really big boot and say it's for the giants and stuff like this. It would be it would be really neat. Oh, I love coffee. Oh, Miria, in case you're watching, thank you so much for the coffee. It's really good. Um, Right. Will we have folders for unique minis? I think so. Yeah, that sounded sensible. Um, I think that was in the feature requests, actually, saying we would do that. Someone can double check me, but I think we said we were going to do that. Any news on spectator mode? Don't think so. Um, we've done some experiments with different things. One of the things we actually... This isn't really... No. Okay, this isn't spectator mode. This was another mode for use with TVs, so that's no, it's not really, um, so yeah, no what kind of support and updates and on new asset types can we expect post full release <clears throat> I'm the wrong person to answer that actually um, I could try and pull things <laughs> out of bits of my brain, but I would probably be wrong um, so I would ask the asset team um, what are you all doing for self-care through dev? Is there anything we can do as players to keep you sane? That is so nice. Um, that's a really good question. I think it's understanding. I think most of the things come down to... Like, when does it get scary? It gets scary kind of when you think that you're trapped by your own promises like we, we we know we can deliver something um and you you have to balance things right you have to be optimistic about what you can do and try and deliver within a certain period of time um but you only have so much bandwidth as a small team and you can't afford to go bigger right we can't afford and again server costs are nothing next to the cost of a person presuming you're paying them well right presuming you're paying like them fairly like then yeah that's tricky um i mean so far it's been really good right like we've been able to like delay the initial release and things like this and people understand um one thing that 
Okay, this this is I'm, I I will say this and I will say this as me rather than kind of spokesperson for Bouncy Rock. This is a personal opinion. I think that um, a lot of things to do with crunch um, are about consent and the same problems that come with being able to say whether you want to crunch or not um, comes down to whether you can meaningfully give consent. So if you're in a big company where the only way you ever get promoted is by working too much and too and, and unhealthily then it's very difficult to make a reasoned decision about whether you're going to crunch or not because like it, it's almost like it, it's crunch if you aren't able to choose yourself like if you can't make meaningful choice um, but sometimes I love getting up at like 4 a.m and then walk, working for like 18 hours 25 hours straight like some days that is just the coolest thing you find your brain in the right place and you just want to make things and you just want to oh, it's just, it is just the best feeling and then to say no you can't do that like that is verboten um that would suck um that's a really good question and it's really hard to answer um I, I guess it's just it's just a trust thing, man. Like we, we will we will try and be as honest as possible with you, and um, yeah, like uh, and um, yeah, we'll keep going with this lovely community thing we've got going so far. It's been really nice. Thanks so much for that question. That's a really tough one. Um, yeah, um, is there a way I haven't discovered it yet to remove creatures from the unique selection? as I have a ton of them and I can't delete old ones I don't want. We actually don't have a way to delete uniques. Isn't that really stupid? Um, if you delete them, they're still in the panel. You, what you can do is you can uh, right click on them and make them um, non-unique and then delete them. Um, but yeah, that's, uh, that's actually on my to-do list. I really should do that because it's not that hard a feature. Importing custom minis. Will there be uh, some kind of importer from different modeling tools or even places like HeroForge? Okay, so there's a few different parts of that. Uh, the creation of models is separate from the importing of models and we're not building modeling tools right the well we're not building modeling tools that's 100 percent true one of our stretch goals is to create is to make a creature creation tool which will be inside tailspire itself um that's a different thing um tail weaver is going to be the program you use to take a 3d model and package it up and assign the metadata that is required by tailspire to use it as a creature or a prop or a tile. So that is that tool. Um, it's a uh, module for Unity. You basically, you get the free version of Unity and you put this thing in it and then you will have tools inside Unity for processing these models and exporting uh, the packages. And that is the plan for that. Um, importing things from other programs, that really depends on the terms of service of those individual um, providers. So double check that because it's some of them, just because you, yeah, the ownership of the model gets complicated. I'm not a lawyer, so I'm not going to try and dive into that one. But yeah, keep an eye out. Is the intent for the marker system that you are talking about to handle ongoing spell effects? Yeah, that's that's kind of what I'm thinking. Like, yeah, if you've got an area, like I was saying, if you've got an area that time is slowed down within, um, then you want some way to indicate that this is still there and it's something you can remove after a period of time. Um, I hate to sound like a broken record, but I wonder what your thoughts or plans are enhancing lighting for really large rooms. Enhancing lighting. Um, do you mean it's too dark? Um, what do you mean as far as enhancing lighting? There's a few things we want to do. Uh, we want to make sure that we don't have light leaking um, in as many places as we do now. That's a technically hard problem. We'll look into it. Um, we need to look into ranges and intensities of lights in general. Um, we know that like things like, for example, street lamp are really not putting out much or weren't last time I checked. Um, so we'll be looking into those. Um, yeah, it will keep going. Um, but without a, a slightly more specific question, I'm not too sure. Sorry. Um, another question about unique creatures. Will there be a way to add unique creatures multiple times? I, if I grab a unique creature and drop it on the board and then grab it and drop it again, it removes a previous one. Okay, that's by design of a unique creature. So the purpose of a unique is to be able to have a creature that persists across boards and is only ever at one place at one time. What I think you're looking for is being able to set up a creature and then be able to spawn it multiple times like a blueprint of a creature that is coming and that is something we definitely want um yeah so like being able to set up the tinting and like the name and the stats and things like this and then be able to produce like multiple of them um you know fashion it'll come in a clumsy way with copy and paste of creatures because you it will copy things like stats but um yeah it's a good question 
For testing out markers, would it be possible for multiple flashlight uh, type markers, for instance, where they may need to be more than one spotlight? Um, markers. Okay, so if it's if it's like the indicators, like from the ruler system, the problem is we don't have good names for these yet because these aren't made. But like the persistent rulers or indicators or whatever we want to call them. Um, Doot, doot, doot. Let me just have a look. Um, the problem is I started thinking about something else and I'm not good at thinking about two things at the same time. So I don't know why I attempted to do that on stream. Um, let's have a look. Let's go back on that question again. Um, okay, so the ruler system and area of effect stuff is separate from uh, flashlights. If we're talking about the GM flashlights, um, we didn't, don't want to immediately give those to everyone because, again, they can reveal things that they weren't meant to see. Um, we, we will be doing a ping thing, uh, which will be something analogous that players can do to get attention without breaking, um, potentially story-breaking actions. Um, consequences, I mean. So we'll see. Um, yes, I think that answers the question. Sorry if it doesn't. Um, can we mod with the special effects? Will those be extensible? That is the idea long term. Um, I I doubt with everything else that it will be there immediately, right? Because we've got to work out... Like, yeah, there's just too many unknowns to say that right now. But longer term, why not? That would be, that'd be great. I think we've said that before as well. Not sure. Will there be a way to copy and paste tokens? What do you mean by tokens? If you mean creatures, yes, it's coming. I started work on it, but then I got distracted by Fog of War, I think. Um, will there be an option to control focal plane and maybe an even depth of field? I want to be able to ship the focus something farther away. So there are definitely a few parts to this. One, our current camera setup needs work. So there will be work on that to make that experience better. Then the, the, the another part of it is... Um, um, what do we call it? Uh, photo mode. Photo mode will more than likely have more control over that. So if this is regarding taking like glamour shots, you're probably going to have more control there. Um, and then lastly, uh, there's the aspect of accessibility. So for people with um, certain kind of visual condi um, conditions where these cause um, impairments to their play, yes, you'll be able to turn those off full stop locally. Um, the reason they're different is because you know, like it's like, think about the fog slider that we have in atmospheres. When you control something via an atmosphere, it's applied equally to everyone. Whereas when it's accessibility and things like this, this needs to be per person. Um, so yeah, it's interesting. Um, there, there, there's so many cool things that can be done on the accessibility side. I can't wait to get to the point where we can dig into that as well. There's, there's, oh, it's going to be fun. Um, okay. Cyberpunk is hopefully going to become a much bigger thing soon. I love the stuff you've shown so far. Any plans for more? Um, Cyberpunk is a stretch goal for us. Um, so it will be done after the current ream of things um we want to give it a really good like we want that that set that we put out for cyberpunk to be decent so uh, like we're going to give it a good deal of time i i can't say anything more concrete about it really at the moment we're just going to put the same love and care that we put into our other assets into that and try and make something that you can have meaningful cyberpunky games in uh to get your shadow run on um, could we stream boards from a server so we don't need to store it all at once? That's exactly the kind of thing that I'm setting up at the moment. So a lot of things have been done already to make that possible, the way the world is divided up and all that kind of stuff. Um, I was sitting down last night to start reviewing that. The first thing I need to do is work out the... So this is something we haven't actually exposed at all in the game yet, and it's the fact that the first save that it does each play session um each the first change you make to the board each play session results in a different board file on our uh, servers which means we technically store all of the ver versions of the board you've made so far uh, we are trimming that down obviously like we can't do that we, we want to store at least the last five versions so that if somebody screws up a board you can revert to a few days ago um i'm being very cautious about adding that because obviously what we're talking about is a piece of code that goes and deletes board files. And I really don't want to just delete everyone's stuff. So I'm taking, I'm, I've gathered a whole bunch of data now and then I'm going through and seeing where my assumptions are wrong. And I found some of those last night. So there are some bugs uh, that I need to address before I can do that. Um, where are we? Yes. When I'm confident that the current 
uh, board system is doing what I want it to do, um, then I'm going to start going back into the per zone sync. And the zone is that 16 by 16 by 16 region of tiles uh, that we're talking about before. Um, in amongst that, we're also going to do uh, checksumming. So if you've got the latest version of the board already, don't pull it down again. Um, things like that. So yeah, that's coming. Um, I don't know if there's anything else I need to add to that right now. Probably not. Cool. Where are we right now? We're at 2329. Ooh, that's good. Saying that grass looks... <laughs> Someone just spotted the grass in the background. Yeah, that was from some interesting prototypes uh, from a while ago that I can't talk more about. But they were also... it was just, These are basically it was just experiments from a long time ago. Uh, but it was really dope. Very expensive, though. We need to find ways to make that more efficient if we're going to have lots of it. Uh, but wouldn't it be neat? That'd be cool. Um, do you know when... Um, if you will have a streaming mode type of screen so you can live stream the game and the players couldn't see all the DM stuff on your screen. Um, again, timeline, no. Um, I don't know. We need... We need it to... I don't know. Like it, it, It's something we need to sit down and actually think about rather than just throwing something random in. Um, but yeah, I'll... Um, it's on the list. It's really annoying because I was just thinking then, like, oh, I wonder if I could start doing that sooner. Like, what if I started that on that tomorrow? But the, like, the, the second thing is like, yeah, but you said you were going to do this tomorrow. Too. So it's just like, I don't know. I don't know, mate. Sorry. Uh, so is water now going to be rolled into terrain rather than with tiles? Yes, it was all. It was water was never going to be realistically be tiles. Um, at least I hope I've never said that. Uh, I don't think I have. Um, it was just un it, it's always been unfeasible for it to be tiles um there are a few tiles you can see which have water in them uh like if you look at the fountain you can see i think we're using the same water shader um in there but um but yeah that's it uh and that is just a, a means of practicality as well like it, it either has to be really uh granular um in which case it takes up way too much data and it's completely unscalable, or it needs to be really big blocks, in which case how are you going to do nice shorelines? It, it's just like, it's so annoying. What if you want a big... Oh no, I'm getting on a rabbit hole. I'm not going to rant about that. Right, okay, so sorry, just getting late to the stream and hope the question wasn't already asked. Would it be possible to load program script, other sets of rules into Talesware? Like shadow wrong sort of sorts. So right now there are no rule systems, so everyone's equally unserved. Um, but when we start introducing that things, yes, it will be scriptable. The idea is to build a system that can be used with different systems. Um, that is an incredibly hard task. Um, and it's the stretch goal, so I'm not really worried about it yet. My vision for it is more of a, how do you make a very intelligent codex um, that provides information and tooling to GMs and players as it's needed? I think that is critical. And then some kind of component for um, tracking stats and things like this um, has to be part of that in some way. Um, but trying to bake every single rule in so it's all done automatically, I think it's a losing task. And yeah, so don't expect like some kind of AI that can understand all the idiosyncrasies. Um, let's focus on how do we make really good reliable things for players and gms um yeah and th that's something that's you know more manageable as well but that will be the that will be the rule system and yeah it needs to be ex like script and more expandable because we need to put the information in too so why not um do 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 extension to my lighting question i think thinking of lighting volumes like hide volumes so you could select a light from your light settings so you could select a volume for your light settings to activate. In my version, it would allow lighting per room without relying on lighting event sources. Thoughts. Okay, localized lighting. No, we're not got any plans on that. In fact, I think we talked about that in the feature requests update that we did the other day. Um, right now, it's sticking with atmospheres, and we just the idea is to keep atmosphere markers easily accessible in the place you need them, so you can switch them in and out. Um, yes, I, I think. Uh, we could. I'm. I'm very much trying to be aware of time and making sure I just don't go off on on every topic on like a 20 minute discussion of kind of things that are possible and trade offs and things like this. But uh, I think it's safer to say for now. No, we're not doing localized lighting. Can definitely see the appeal. Um, let's uh, let's try and make some of the toolings we planned and then see how 
how good we can make that and go from there, I think. Um, couldn't you potentially have an automatic upgrade tool for assets to allow um, to get around outdated version issues? So if, it, if it's down to version of Unity, um, then you need a copy of Unity, right? Um, so where would we run that? Like it would need to be run somewhere. Um, yeah, I mean, we can make it very easy. Like you just, it, it, like you point it at the folder and it goes through and re rejigs everything that needs to be rejigged. That's great, but someone still needs to do it. Um, and we're not going to be in control of your assets, your mods, right? That's something that's very important. We won't be, um, the idea is, to um, allow you to provide sources of assets that you then add to Tailspire that then Tailspire can pull assets from um, so that the control stays with the community as much as possible. Um, it's very important to us that like we aren't dictating the direction of assets and things like this or becoming like YouTube arbiters of what is acceptable like we don't with toy makers man like that's that's where it comes back to me at least that's where i come back to all the time like i make toys i just want to make toys that people can play with and it's not my business um a lot of things anyway that's that's <laughs> that got a little a little further than it needs to but yeah like um it depends is the answer as far as automatic upgrade things goes it really depends what's being upgraded um will tell spy ever support ray tracing um ray tracing is a tool um and so it needs to yeah it needs to be the appropriate tool for the job does it make stuff better right now does it make the game better does it serve the design better does it make it more fun if it doesn't it's definitely not a priority um how soon also uh what range of machines going to be able to support it like it's going to be a while before this is in your low end GPUs in a way that makes sense and things like this it's it is a great space it's really interesting to see because i mean like ray tracing we do ray tracing in games all the time anyway but for specific techniques and in specific ways and like you don't ray trace the entire scene it well it'll get there like let's let the industry work that through that all the way and then we can look at um how it would be supported i mean because that thing for us, it's going to need to come to Unity first, right? Uh, didn't I hear a whisper about D and D Beyond some time ago? Anything to share? I mean, nothing. I don't think so. Other than we think they're great, and we'd love to do things with them. I'd love to work out integrations so we can have D and D Beyond type stuff in um, in Tailspire. And I mean, that goes for a lot of there. There's so many cool things out there in this space that we it would be just great to work with people and do things on. And uh, let them know. That's all I can say. Let them know. Um, yeah. Oh man. They, it's it's so it gets so exciting every now and again just to think about if this works, right? If this game can be successful and we can keep doing this, how many opportunities and how many cool things there are we can add to this game in the future? It's like I I cannot tell you just how exciting it is to wake up each morning and know that's true. It's really fun. Um, uh alternate idea regarding sticking to one unity version before ea during ea to release slowly updated versions as in my opinion okay i need to read this question slowly because i'm getting it wrong um to release slowly update versions as in my honest opinion in, uh, in no i'm not i'm reading that wrong still as in my opinion Early access is more important than mods. Then on release, stick more heavily to a version. Okay, right. So it's like, why don't we just keep experimenting throughout the early access stage uh, with versions and then um, just not worry about breaking things and then... Um, it's a good question. I mean, if, if we need it, we definitely would. I mean, like, the next version, like, the next version that's currently in alpha or beta does have some big improvements to rendering performance um, for some of the cases we're interested in. But the schemes we're also looking at also mitigate the problem. So it, it, it's a lot of trade-offs. One of the things with upgrading to a new version is you're upgrading into new versions of everything. So you have bugs in various places. And like 
how much time are you going to be spending with those versus um, making the features you need to make and things like that. It, it's a tough one. It's a re- it is a really tough one. Um, yeah, what we can say is if we need to, we will. Um, if we don't, we're going to try and stick with... A, we need to fix at some point. But yeah, you're right. We could do that closer to the actual um, first V1 release. How about the soundtrack? Anything new on that? I actually don't have any new news on soundtrack today. Um, how about the, so? Any news on that? I'm not sure exactly what you mean, uh, but I think the answer is nope. And uh, but do ping us about that. Ping, yeah, but I, I'm the I'm the wrong person to answer that question, unfortunately. But I'm sure like Johnny and uh, Dwarf are in the chat. They might have already answered you actually. Um, not the order author regarding scratch but i imagine it's more of the visual programming so yeah that's the uh, scratch programming thing i was talking about using block based image and such definitely uh, the scripting system is going to be um visually programmed um it's a graph based system um uh, we've got a custom scripting engine that's that's what it boils down to and the reason we went with that is to have very predictable performance when you start pasting very large numbers of things because what you can do even if we say oh you could like for like scripted things like doors you can only place one at a time, right? You can still copy and paste until it's a problem, right? And if someone pastes 10,000 doors because they're making a world of doors... Oh, look, here's an example. Here's a really good example, actually. Right? People build things out of what's cool, right? Look at these. These look great. They are all doors. And some of the doors are stacked. <laughs> this one's two doors. It's actually impressive they managed to get it in there. Um, right? And these, like the floors are all made of hatches. Every single thing in all of these is a scripted object. So when people copy and paste this, which clearly these were copied and pasted, um, that's a lot of scriptable objects that suddenly become available. And if you start talking about pasting large chunks of the board, which you obviously want to be able to get slabs to be bigger over time, um, the scripting system basically has to be ready to handle an extra 10,000 things that just appeared. Um, And we can do that. Uh, but it means making trade-offs. Um, yeah, and so that's why we've gone for a little custom system. It's it's really cool. It's a, it's a fun problem to have. But um, but yes, we will have a visual scripting thing. Um, the So when I was prototyping that, if you saw in the dev logs, I had a kind of noodle graph thing. The uh, noodle graph is why it's, the scripting language is called spaghetti. Um, but um, I w- that system as cool as it was and the easy as it was to get something working i don't think it's going to perform that well on larger graphs so i need i want to move over to unity's new graph node ui stuff but that was not ready at the time and so i really didn't want to dive into that and deal with that i think it's further along now as they're developing their um shader scripting um blueprinty thing that they're doing so um yeah i'll be diving back into that at some point Okay, let's have a look. Where are we up to? Okay, will all features be completed before the game comes out? Early access? No. Um, no, not at all. We the, the idea for early access is you have something that is a solid, competent subset. Um, this is a, 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 this is a game, right? Like, you have a game. It's a, a perfectly reasonable game. And then you can expand and go deeper and all these kind of things throughout the early access. But like the the ideal, of course, would be like in essence, like the ideal of an early access would kind of be that you can ship something a little rougher and uh, then develop it over time. But I, but I think that's more what we're doing with the beta. It's kind of interesting. Um, I, I think we, yeah, we need, I don't think I have anything to say there. I'm not sure where I started a new sentence. Oh, well um will there be an option for by the dm to toggle an overlay that shows what line of sight for for each model if you right click on a model um see if that works here how interesting why is that not working i think oh it's maybe it's it oh oh i found a bug (laughs) so what's meant to happen is i'm not sure if i'm just in doing something wrong here but when you right click on a creature it's meant to show an indicator above other creatures to let you know which ones are in line of sight or not so um but that isn't happening and i'm not sure why (laughs) so i think i've got another bug for the list it's probably already been reported in the bug site um oh yeah just like we had a shout out for the people who've been um making all the asset requests huge thanks to all the people that have been filing bugs i really really appreciate it 
it's so good to have that resource there. Um, again, like recently, I've been focusing more on um, features and research rather than um, active bug fixing. But there is obviously a wealth of information there I can dive back in. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, you will see me back in there again in time. All right. Is it possible to add two extra stats so we can end up with six stats in total? I mean, yes, technically that's possible. It's some work, but um, it's not just like I go into Unity and say two more, right? Like it, it needs, there are changes on the back end, the front end and things like that. Um, technically, yes, we could do that. But why six? Why not eight? Like if we change it, like then it's just the next, it's the next one. Um, but yeah. Shout out a reason. It'd be interesting. Um, RE flashlights. What about um, adding a flashlight in lighting so the GM has a toggle flashlight hotkeyed but can also build a flashlight they can place as desired? Oh, I see. So you just want to be able to place a light which illuminates an area? Um, we're not... I don't... I think any kind of lighting we have, we want to really attach to some kind of prop. Uh, we want to have it make sense within the world. Um, not just kind of invisible lighting things. I, that's something that I'm pretty sure we've said no to before. Um, but yeah, more options for placing lights in places. I can't. Um, I don't see that being impossible. Like, there's going to be more variety of light lit assets in time as well. Um, will there be any light source you can use in a really big room with roofs, where light fixtures around the walls don't reach? Okay, so yeah, we've got a. Um, we've clearly got an issue right now with the kind of lighting we're providing isn't reaching far enough to be useful in the scenarios that you're talking about. That is a problem, and uh, we should look at that. Thanks for reporting it. Um, what are the chances of getting a, of getting a bunch of one-by-one -one block assets to, of just various colors to use as placeholders? And on that note, any generic tokens to use as enemies? We will not be adding those, and because they make us sad. Um, <laughs> I'm really sorry. I know it's something people some people want, um, we can't do it like we, we've tried like well at least like we, we've put in cardboard style tokens before and it was upsetting right so we won't do it but good news modding's coming so as soon as that's out someone is going to just add a tile shaped red green blue block and um yeah it's gonna happen. <laughs> it's gonna happen we can't stop it but we we can't stop it without breaking the game so no We'll just have to deal with it, won't we? Um, but yeah, you'll have it then. I bet that's like the first mod as well. That's going to be so tragic. <laughs> Has there been any thought on 2D top-down version of the current map from a player's view that could be viewed by remote players with slower connections? No. Um, no. The, the way that people build and play in Tailspire doesn't... If, if you just take a 2D view to it, it doesn't work in all the places. It doesn't... It just doesn't work. It, like, it's... And it's not so it if you wanted to make the system I'm, I'm trying like the technical problem solving part of my brain is trying to think of like how you would do that it is a it is a task for a different game i think it is just like it would require such a level of making sure assets and the systems in the game do are compatible with that mode of play that you're basically making a different kind of game. Um, and I don't think... That's not what Tailspire needs to be for us. Um, I think there are... Uh, if you want to do 2D things, I, th I think there are great offerings right now, especially like in, in the orthographic and top-down space. There are people making awesome stuff, and they're the best at making it, you know? Like, Fantasy Grounds is the best at being Fantasy Grounds. They, are, they build great tooling for... For that specific thing i'm it's like i wouldn't want to i would not want to be their competitor put it that way because they're really good at it and it's the same goes for tabletop simulator same goes for Roll 20 like it, the, the people out there who do their thing do it really well and we just have to trust our thing i think follow that thread um when terrain is implemented are there other textures you're hoping to implement uh, you mentioned caves already but oh but what comes first the terrain or the tiles uh well the new terrain system is so how do we answer that? We want the terrain system to support different biomes. Yes. Um, and then... Um, but it's a parallel problem to, um, to tiles. 
so it's interesting i think once we have like um like once we have the ability to make kind of desert scapes then it makes sense for more tiles that are desert themed so in that way they have an interplay um but the terrain system is very much on kind of mine and johnny's it's more of a technical problem um at first for the first while at least so um so it doesn't stop tiles being made basically they're independent problems um but the other part of the question was are there any other textures you're hoping to implement yeah like we, we want to be able to support different biomes and things like this we'll really have to see how, how it takes shape it's it's so hard you just have to trust that there is a good answer in there and that, that you're going in the right direction it's prototyping is crazy it's it's really fun when you have infinite time it's kind of scary when you don't but it's uh it's, you got to do it um i love the isolated red filter nice uh any chances we can be upgraded to isolate various other colors i mean like we're going to keep adding more um atmosphere processy things over time um so i i can see that happening um how far away is pointers for players a feature that allows players to point at locations on the board are really enjoys a product oh thanks so much um pointers for players don't it um i mean at the moment let me think um i have we haven't started working on ping yet so that i guess the answer is not yet <laughs> uh, i think rulers to a certain extent you'll be able to like show for certain things with that but i i got a feeling that'd be a little clunky for just indicating here right um yeah we have to see i don't really don't know um we'll keep you posted i say that a lot don't i um do you have any plans for handouts and image sharing this is a, ta a sideways answer to your question. We know we don't have overlapping windows. So um, we've seen kind of vignette modes for certain games that we like, or at least um, are, are more favorable than some of the other options. Um, plans regarding that. Plans, uh, as far as image sharing, I would really love to do it peer to peer. So as I slowly start adding more things for that, like ultimately we want to get voice chat into the game right so at that point we need to be able to form uh we want that running not through our servers we want that to be peer-to-peer -peer. so at that point we have channels for sending data backwards and forwards and maybe we use that to sync files across as well that's that is where my head is with that but because i just haven't started on that problem yet i don't know anymore um what do you see as the largest hurdle you still have to overcome uh it's it's definitely uh that's a really that's a tough question that's a really tough question it's somewhere in that space of stuff that i've mentioned like it's not the rendering and performance as much like that's a lot of work but right now i think that we've got a, a path on that i think the scary the uh, toughest thing right now is that certain systems have not revealed themselves to us in like what in, in how they're meant to feel right we're searching in a space with prototypes and we haven't found what it is and that's uh that can be quite difficult i think i think that's a big one and then as soon as we get through the unknown part of it the hardest part is going to be holy crap we have to build this and we have to make sure that all the network network sync gets gets tricky um yeah that's a really good question thanks for answering uh, the line of sight question expanding on that is um exp expansion to that is that seeing whether a model is visible to another is helpful but i guess i was thinking more of a color overlay on the grounds that shows the boundaries of the line of sight of the selection token mm, that's interesting okay so let's think about how that would be um all right so we've got the space here um and we have a we have some minis right like uh, this probably isn't the best space is there one well, that's a little more appropriate um do this i love the teleport feature it's great all right so how would we visualize that uh we would take this and we would have an overlay now remember this is in 3d space right so your vision is basically would have to involve casting rays out in all different kinds of directions and the view is 360 always right because 
having to turn your creature to face in each individual direction is very tedious and also requires a level of precision which just isn't that fun um so it would basically be the same thing as the fog of war making a visualizer for that is is not easy it's actually it's, it's easy when it's top down right because when you when you're in two dimensions um you get you have like this god mode right you can see across the entire world you can see beyond the dimensions that constrain the world so like in lemmings for example that's your god power and when you're doing 2d you can do like a 2d kind of um casts out here almost like shadow casting to show what's in view and what's not but when it's 3d that shadow is in three dimensions now imagine there are a hundred things in the scene and each of them have their kind of spheres with these strange casted like um shapes inside them that would be very difficult to that would get very messy and so basically what i'm saying is like i can't see on how to a do that very fast and also make it like work really well in that space it's an interesting idea um it's not a one i have a good technical solution for um and like we've discussed it we have discussed it internally but neither of us or any of us have managed to come up with uh, the best way of doing that yet good question party line of sight will it be a setting that can be turned on or off do you do you always want to have to split up the party into different groups it'll start a uh, line of sight will be per party to start with um it it feels like the thing that is most likely to be configurable um fog of war for parties i think is going to stay per party that's my gut like that's uh, my guts are up here apparently <laughs> i'm a strangely built man um but yeah that's uh that's my current thinking on that um some tiles do not have easy to see grids any plans for grids we need um what we used to have was a tooling when you picked something up it showed you the places you could walk and um we need something like that again and that will that, that would be kind of more grid based um yeah that that's where we are on that at the moment we need something that respects kind of terrain and again the verticality of the space and things like this where we are looking into it um without player pointers a compass would be really handy compass is on the list of things we want to do um by the plan saying no questions just want to say thanks to the devs for making so many varieties of shapes sizes and positions for uh, objects and walls make so many possibilities to get creative with clipping and each new assets uh you're very welcome it's it like to be honest it is just a joy to see what you're building you you guys build you just show us how it's done to be honest it's wild to wake up and go like oh tailspire can do that that's cool i, I had no idea um i think that's uh yeah brother panan if you're if i remember right you're the one doing the vehicles yes your things have come up on the internal chat quite a number of times along with yeah some other well-known folks i think we've hit the bottom of the list um what time is it we are at 23 50 jesus look at that that's almost exactly two hours okay so what i'll say is um let's give it a couple more minutes for questions to roll in any follow-ups any things you want to cover throw it out there um then i will call in a night and uh yeah it's time for a coffee All right let's uh let's see what rolls in thank you so much for coming by the way it's been really cool um it's nice to do one of these updates again it's uh it's been on our minds for quite a while um it is just a bit nice to be able to kind of just sit down go through a bunch of things say where we are yeah it's really neat what a cool job i mean it's weird like you go i want to make games and it kind of part of it involves sitting in front of a camera with a 3d printer and going yeah we're gonna do things trust us but um but yeah we are please trust us <laughs> um you mean another coffee yeah why not i don't need to sleep okay there's another question that's coming i believe i heard you say earlier saying um that some emotes you'll be adding will be added to ones to represent down and dead models for I believe I heard you saying earlier that emotes will be added are ones to represent down dead models. That's one of the emotes we'll be adding for down and dead things for sure. Yeah. Um, I didn't see any other questiony part to that, so I'll just say yes. 
Have I used my 3D printer for tail spire stuff? I don't actually know. Um, it hasn't got enough use yet, actually. I've got a few things I need to make for around the house. And uh, we printed uh, the fat cap from um, Final Fantasy XIV. Because uh, <laughs> it's adorable. Uh, but yeah, off topic, Chris, off topic. Uh, any guesses as to which uh, feature will likely ship next? Nope. Um, I've, I've learned against that. Because I, I've seen things that, like... One of the times we had things like that were like a day away from shipping. I'm like, there is no way this is not shipping. And then mayhem ensues. So I, I'm not playing that game anymore. I have learned the gods do not take kindly to that kind of estimation. Any special Nintendo style? We got one more thing, announcement combo. Nope, I'm afraid not. You've, that's the only thing with like being really um, upfront with what you're up to is, uh, yeah, when you do stuff like this, you can't go, and one more thing, right? Um... When placing tiles, especially when clipping uh, mode is enabled, it's difficult to see where the tile will be placed. Any plans for a live preview? I don't know the answer to exactly that question. I just know that um, Johnny has a lot of plans in his head regarding building in general. Um, I'm not sure if I mentioned this earlier. One of the things that might help to do uh, at some point is we will, and, and we'll set this up when it needs to happen, is that it would be cool to be able to say, okay, here's a uh, GitHub uh, issue thread. And it's dedicated to camera issues, right? Record, like, go find issues you have in real scenarios and put all your issues here, like, in one place so we can go through and we go, okay, these are the things that we need to address. Let's have a look at that. Maybe we'll do that. Um, I can think of certain cases where that makes sense. Oh, dear, hay fever is fun. Uh, follow up. The line of sight vis token visualization would definitely need to be a toggle uh, setting key press to only visualize what the currently selected token is. Maybe some sort of transparent cloud and definitely not an always on thing. Yeah. Yeah, it's. um, that, That's a challenge, right? <laughs> like, just. Like, there are, there, are, there are just elements to that that are quite tricky. Just because the. Uh, yeah, the geometry of a view is very. It's just, yeah. Yeah, it's complicated. It's an interesting one. Um, I'm trying to think of... I mean, to a degree, you see it from the the, the fog stuff that we've done. Um, ah, you know, it's, it's so, it gets so tempting because I just keep starting to think about, like, how could we do that? But then I've got to remember we've got plenty of stuff to do. Um, so let's say no for now. But it is, yeah, again, it's cool. I think you addressed this in your FAQ, but have you considered token token based lighting affects projectiles uh, currently can attack? Oh, the the spell's definitely coming. Uh, like you saw in the trailer, where it's like blasts from the wizard uh, kind of thing. We want that in there. That would be really good. That's um, I can't remember that. Don't think that's part of emotes. No, I think that's a separate thing. We'll get back to you on that. What's your ideas for possibly changing lighting strength to different torch like objects? I'm not uh, the one. To really have ideas on that, I can think of like random things, like um, that provide con like some degree of control. But uh, like, I'm not the the reason Tailspire looks great. Uh, that's one of the things I, I've felt sometimes feel bad because like it just it's very unhumble to say our oh, game looks great, right? I am not responsible for it looking good, right? <laughs> Anything that looks good about it wasn't in my hands. So when I see assets come in, I get the same reactions that you do. It's just like, dude, these are really cool. So yeah. Um, I'm not the one that makes it look good or makes the visual stuff make sense. So, um, yeah, you're asking the wrong one, I'm afraid. Um, you've said you would, uh, you want to work with D&D Beyond and you'd love to, but there's something your team are engaging or does um, the community push. Okay, so... Um, it, it always helps for the community to be, like, saying things. I mean, obviously not being dicks about it and not, like, spamming... The issue again and again and again but if there is a thread where you can like request things in a sensible way that's in the correct place on these third parties you would like us to work with it's great to go and talk to them and just let us know and let them know that you know it's real it's here and things are going on um other than that like again we wouldn't talk about anything that we had going on with anyone until it was time to talk about it so maybe we are we're not but maybe we are um <laughs> why would i dig up myself a hole like that so stupid right um oh there are more questions coming in okay where's the morgoth stair block going to be fixed it depends what you mean on fixed um 
we that's one of the things actually we could do is we could set up a little thread where people can show their issues they have with stairs in one place um because yeah there's there's been a few different things people have claimed about stairs at different times um and some of them have resolved some of them haven't probably um yeah it's interesting um quiet down in mod chat you're beeping on my computer because i haven't muted you i really should mute you shouldn't i um whereas mute channel mute for now there we go um you are muted um cyberpunk stuff before after early access after early access uh or at least yeah I, I, yeah after early access um i'm pretty sure about that uh line of sight fog of war visualization what about uh visualizing with top down god mode view presented in a window um this eliminates a lot of the complexity about implementing in 3D. Not really. Um, it doesn't because the view information still needs to be calculated, uh, which is 3D. I mean, like um, in this scene, if if like uh, if this is a solid object, how high it is matters. Where you are in the room matters. Uh, so the calculation still does to be do done in 3D. Um, then if we're going to present it in 2D, then you need to flatten the information, which maybe that's not a too expensive an operation. Um, maybe it is. And then where in vertical space are you? Like, are you here? Or are you like uh, here? Or are you here? Like the height of the room matters. Like if it's a crawl space you're in and you're fighting spiders, it matters. Or if you're in a hall, it matters. Something you need contextual awareness. Um, it's things that suddenly like the game can't know. And so then you would require your GM to basically kind of tell the game or feed it information before the systems will work well. And that's horrible. A system should as much as possible do its job well right on its own if you're having to babysit systems they probably need looking at right so that's the uh that's i, w I wish there was a um a kind of trivial answer to that one alas no uh sorry if it's been asked before but the thing with lighting uh strikes and smokes will there be a way to have a consistent cloud a, a constant cloud of smoke a place where lightning strikes periodically that's a good question um not to begin with that's for sure um fog is interesting it would be cool to do um they have story relevant elements right like if if lightning strikes someone that probably matters um so it's for for like for the atmosphere systems the way we imagine doing th like like a storm is we do sheet lightning right so we have the light element of and uh we have the kind of darkness and we have the the noises involved and we can have rain and things like this um Rain is ambient. Unless your creature is, like, soluble, uh, it's probably not going to immediately be bothered by that. Like, it, there's enough kind of control there implicitly that it's all right. Um, when you have things that are story affecting, that matters. Fog is just expensive to do well. So, um, yeah, we need to find good ways of doing that. And it would also need to work on a range of machines with different board sizes. It's tough. I don't know. It's a good question. Well, we see di a different system of initiative. Uh, example with cards. We have no plans for cards. Um, it, like, it makes sense. There are definitely rule systems that use cards. Uh, we don't. We just don't have anything in our roadmap for that at all. I've heard. Uh, even just allowing creatures to have multiple initiative positions uh, would allow that to be a workaround. Yeah, work, work around it. Not a work around it is a thing, but work around. Yeah, yeah, I can see that point. It's kind of interesting the idea of a creature having multiple positions with the initiative and it doesn't seem technically unfeasible at all um i'm not it's not like zero work right but it is it's not reasonable yeah it's uh it's something we should look at actually that's a good point thank you um we recently uh played an encounter where we thought where we were in a dust storm and we can only see about 10 feet around our character this is something that might be hand handled in the future through fog of war or some sort of atmosphere i would say yeah like an atmosphere like a variant of um like being able to pull the fog into a certain color into a certain distance and then having a, like particle type effects like we have rain to indicate dust and stuff like this something that just brought all that together in a nice way yeah, i mean that is feasible and uh, works across a range of machines and stuff like that that's uh Will there ever be a, a potential to add swarm type creatures? No idea. Um, it's very, I guess, the appeal. Um, oh, I don't mean just bees and wasps, but things 
like units in a large scale combat. I love having large scale battles. Yeah, that's. I mean, we definitely haven't got to the point where we've had to kind of like really target large scale battles yet. So, but uh, I I don't think swarms. I'm just trying to think again. I can think of technical things about it, but I can't say. So the answer is no. We have no thoughts about that. Um, other than it's a very long way off. Line of sight, fog of war. Okay, then what about jumping the camera into the player's eyes, head, and being able to look around uh, with the ability to set the distances? Oh, we really don't want to do first person. Um, I mean, if it's whether... Oh, yeah. Okay. I, I, I can see the desire. Like, it, it feels like... Okay. What I mean, what we are going to have to do, because our plates are obviously full already for the near duration... Um, we are going to have to build this thing and we're going to have to see what is still an issue. And there's a good chance that maybe this is still an issue. Um, maybe something else we do mitigates it in a way. Maybe, yeah, we just don't know yet, do we? Um, I think it's quite likely that this one will still be something that remains after we do all the things that we said we're going to do for the early access and up to V1. So I think during that process, during early access, this is a, a thing we can revisit and think about and like say, okay, like what are what are these scenarios minus all the things we have fixed? What are the scenarios that still remain? Um, I can definitely see the appeal, right? It's uh, and it might be something we have to like concede a point and just do a thing a certain way, but it's not worth us saying to go into that right now. Flying an elevation of minis. Any plans for it? Yep, it's coming. Um, yeah, the first version is likely to be like. We want to like doing flying well is going to require some some serious work on the character controller. Um, we'll probably release it sooner than we want to, um, and just have to be like, okay, this doesn't feel as good as it should, but at least we have it, kind of thing. That's something I could see happening. Um, but yeah, like it, we want it, we want it, we want it to be good long term as well. Um, will mods support the new shader graph effects? Um, don't know. Sorry for the cannon worms in line of sight. Not at all. These are great questions. Where do you go? Now, this is the this is the thing about sculpting a video game, right? Like finding these trade-offs and dealing with them and trying to go, okay, like this is part of our budget and we've got all these other things to do and like both CPU and GPU and just like personal, like you've got to build it time. This is this is the game of making games. So um it's great. Don't worry about it. That's that's awesome. I think I think it's probably time to call it a night. Thank you uh so much for coming out these have been great questions i hope this was something that was useful i hope this touched some things that we haven't talked about before and um yeah just I just hope this is worthwhile it's really nice to be able to work with such great people um you keep us on our toes and uh yeah we're really enjoying what we're doing so far let's keep building this game and uh see what we can do keep um yeah i guess we'll see you next time uh thanks so much and we will get this stream up on youtube as soon as possible Good night. Ciao.